Wait, you're planning on going to HHN this year and you still haven't bought tickets? What are you doing? You could ruin your entire trip. Did you know that last year, almost 25% of the nights that the event was held sold out? And you may even be thinking, I can just wait until I get to the event to buy my tickets. And that is a huge mistake for a lot of different reasons. But it's not the only mistake that people make when planning their visits to Halloween Horror Nights. So what we're gonna do in today's video is tell you the five biggest mistakes that people make when planning their trips to HHM. Like we alluded to, there are some major mistakes that you can make when planning for Halloween Horror Nights. And the first one is not purchasing your tickets ahead of time. Picture this, you and your friends are beyond excited for the houses at this year's event. You spent all this time planning, you took time off work, the only three vacation days you get for the entire year. You finally get to the front of the line for the ticket booth and they're completely sold out. You waited all this time, you paid all this money, you took time off work, and at the end of the day, you don't get to go to Halloween Horror Nights. If you wait to purchase your tickets until you get to the event, this could be the reality that you face. But ticket selling out isn't the only issue that could come up if you don't purchase them ahead of time. Another problem with waiting to buy tickets is just that. You're gonna have to wait in line once you get there. If you purchase them ahead of time, you can print them out at home, you can attach them to Universal's mobile app, you can even pick them up at your on-site hotel. However you go about it, this is going to save you so much time. And when we're talking about HHN, time is precious. Plus, purchasing your tickets ahead of time can actually save you money. Now, HHN tickets don't go up in price as you get closer to the event or anything like that. It's just that Universal sort of upcharges you for getting them at the gate. They do the exact same thing with their daytime park tickets. It's like 10 or 15%, I can't really remember. But if the reason that you're waiting to buy those tickets is because you're hopeful that a multi-night ticket becomes available, so the frequent fear passes, which is just essentially a seasonal pass for the event, well, we kind of have a solution for that as well. What we suggest doing and what we have already done is purchased our single night tickets. Now, like we plan on going a lot, probably like 30 nights or something. We didn't buy 30 <laughs> nights worth of tickets. That would be absolutely <laughs> crazy and very expensive. What we've done is picked a few nights that we definitely want to be at the event and we've went ahead and purchased those tickets. And then if and when, those frequent fear passes do become available, Universal will happily allow you to upgrade from those single night tickets to the multi-night option. This year, hotel prices at the Universal Orlando Resort have continued to go up and up and up like everything else in the world, likely leading more and more people to stay off-site for this year's event, which we think is another huge mistake for a few reasons. Like we mentioned earlier, the event typically runs until a about two in the morning. And if we're being honest, it is an adult themed event, which means there are adult beverages. So having somewhere to stay that offers quick, free, and easy transportation to and from your hotel can be a literal lifesaver. Plus, some of the on-site hotels do have some extra seasonal festivities this time of year, and you do have to be staying at the Universal Orlando Resort to be able to attend those activities. We're looking at you, Cabana Bay. Universal also announced that there's going to be a special entrance to Halloween Horror Nights this year that is exclusively for on-site guests. Another thing that staying on site makes way easier is picking up your tickets. Now, there are a few ways that you can get a hold of your tickets before you even leave the house. If you purchase them on Universal's mobile app, those tickets will be tied to your account and you'll have access to your digital tickets immediately. Yeah, and we love using the mobile app. We talk about it a lot. We just don't think it should be exclusively how you have your tickets because you're gonna be using your phone a lot. You're gonna be waiting in lines and using it. And of course, you're gonna be taking some pictures if your phone dies, you, know, you just don't have a ticket and that's not a good thing. You can also print out a paper copy of your ticket at home, but if you're like us, we like to have that physical ticket from oh. Universal to hold on to. Most people, when they go to pick up their tickets, they head straight to Will Call. And the problem with that is that that's where most people go and there's gonna be a pretty long line there. But if you are staying on site at Universal, you can actually pick up your park tickets and your HHN tickets in your hotel lobby, making it easier than ever to get right to the fun. 
When you're planning your trip to HHN, one of the biggest things on your mind is probably your budget, understandably. But if you focus too much on the money, you might fall into our next mistake, which is setting unrealistic expectations for yourself. Most people, when they visit HHN, they also plan on spending some time in the parks during the day as well. So let's say that your goal is to spend three days in the parks and two nights at HHN. You could logistically get all of this done in a three-day trip. Let's say you fly into Orlando early Friday morning. As soon as you get there, you head straight to the parks. You spend all day in the parks before going to HHN that night. Saturday, you wake up, you do it all again. Spend all day in the parks, go to HHN that night. Sunday, you wake up, you spend the whole day in the parks before flying home Sunday night. And just like that, you have three days in the parks and two nights at HHN all wrapped up, right? Well, that is where you would be wrong. Although this is technically possible, we can't tell you how much we advise against doing that. We've actually had this exact same itinerary ourselves and it was unbelievably exhausting. I knew it sounded familiar. <laughs> I was over here having like small panic attacks and just flashbacks. Like and a nightmare? I, yeah. I don't think my feet have recovered yet and it's been like three years. When people are planning for HHN, they tend to overestimate their stamina and determination while simultaneously underestimating how tired they're going to be after staying at HHN until 2 in the morning. I think you're also underestimating A, how hard concrete is, and B, how soft your feet are. If you spend two days walking 40 plus thousand steps, your feet are going to be howling. That is a Halloween pun. <laughs> Like Tyler mentioned, I don't think people realize how much walking you would have to do to spend a full day in the parks and go to HHN all night. We've done it a few times and we always get close to like 50,000 steps, which is at least 40,000 too many. It may be more than that. For those of you that are scoffing at us right now, like, oh, I've spent an entire day in the parks. It can't be that bad. Halloween Horror Nights is a completely different animal. Mm -hmm. The houses aren't like in the middle of the parks. They're hidden backstage so that you can't see them. And it can be a trek to get back there. Yeah, you know how the shortest distance between two places is a straight line? You will not have any straight lines. It's like a slalom course back there. You just <laughs> Just zigzagging the entire way. Planning a trip like this is a recipe for disaster, so make sure you include some time to rest and recover in your trip because you are definitely gonna need it. If you've ever visited Halloween Horror Nights, you've probably noticed that it's a really interesting event. Sure, there's a show or two for people to enjoy, and there are a handful of rides that remain open most of the night, but pretty much everyone there has the exact same goal. Visit as many of the 10 haunted houses as possible. Now, in contrast, Universal Studios has 15 attractions, not including some of the shows, and we haven't even gotten to Islands of Adventure. You may be wondering why we're sitting here counting up attractions versus haunted houses, and it's to explain our next mistake, which is not giving yourself enough nights at the event. One of the most common complaints of visiting literally any theme park is that people hate waiting in line. Oh, yeah. And we get it, we hate waiting in line too. But HHN is a really interesting event when you start talking about lines because everyone is there to see the same 10 houses. If you think about the crowds that are at the parks on any given day and you take all those people and put them in line for 10 separate things, you're bound to get some really high wait times. And we want to preface this by saying that any trip to the event is better than no trip at all. Absolutely. So if you can only afford one ticket to the event, or you can only get one night off work, by all means, buy that ticket, go to the event, and have an absolute blast. We've had to do it ourselves a couple times. Like, one night at the event is way better than zero, I promise. But if you are the type of person that is an absolute completionist, mm. and you want to do and see everything that Halloween Horror Nights has to offer, you may need more than one night. And on top of that, you never know what's going to happen. You could be planning to go to the event one night and it'd be an absolute washout. Yep. Last year, during opening weekend, we sat underneath the awnings at the Animal Actors Pavilion for over two hours waiting for the rain mm -hmm. to stop. You never know when you're gonna have unforeseen circumstances like that. And you also never know when you're gonna get a bad run through on a specific house. And what we mean by that is that some of the bigger scares are on a timer, so the characters can can't just like jump out and scare you whenever they want. They have to go at a specific time. And depending on your timing walking through the house, you could nail it and hit all of the scares the first time, but you could also be a little bit off and miss some of the bigger scares. Yeah, we, we've had this happen multiple times where we will go through a house 
three, four times and just have bad walkthroughs and be like, that's a bad house. And then we give it another shot and the next two or three walkthroughs are really good. And it becomes one of our favorite houses from the entire event. So we're saying that because we just feel like you need to give yourself more opportunities to yeah. go through the houses to really judge them. Cause creative puts a lot of work into them and judging them on one walkthrough, it's really difficult to do because timing is everything. If you're enjoying this video and would like to see more HHN content from us, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below letting us know what you would like to see next. If you're watching this video, you're probably in the midst of planning a Halloween Horror Nights vacation. Or you just love Halloween Horror Nights like us. And there are probably a few things that you haven't nailed down for your trip yet. Maybe you're waiting for work to approve your vacation request. Maybe you're still trying to get your budget figured out. Or you could even be waiting on some friends to tell you if they're actually going with you or not. But regardless, the next mistake that people make is not booking their hotel in advance. Anyone that's had a basic economics class understands that as more people book a hotel room for a specific date, the price goes up. It's simple supply and demand. So the later that you wait to book your hotel room, the more expensive it's going to be. But it gets worse than that. If you're planning on going to the event during a specifically busy time, like opening weekend, for example, the rooms can book up really mm -hmm. quickly. The Hard Rock Hotel is already completely booked for opening weekend this year. Well, that is except for the Graceland suite, but that room is already over 2K a night. If you plan on staying there, or if you are staying there, just give us a call. Like we'll run up to the room and check things out, make sure everything's okay. I might play a little piano. I can't even play piano, but I do want to play that one. Yeah, but if that's the case, you're probably not concerned with these tips anyway. Yeah, but still call us because piano. A lot of people that are visiting HHN are annual pass holders and they're waiting for that pass holder discount to become available before they book their hotel rooms. We have a little bit of a cautionary tale about that. So Tyler and I got married at the Hard Rock Hotel at the Universal Orlando Resort. So we promised each other that every year for our anniversary, we're gonna go down there and stay at the Hard Rock to celebrate. The problem is that our anniversary is during the busiest part of spring break season. So last year, we started looking at hotel rooms back in September, okay, several months in advance. And when we first looked, the hotel rooms at the Hard Rock were over $350 per night. No, no, we will wait. Yeah, we were not <laughs> going to pay that. Like that was out of our price range. So we decided to wait and wait and wait. And what we saw was that the price went up and up and up. And so eventually, I think it was late January, the pass holder discount did become available for the Hard Rock Hotel. But the problem was that at that point, the price was so expensive that even with the discount, we were paying over $450 per night for that hotel room. So what we ended up having to do was book one night at the Hard Rock because we promised each other that we were gonna stay there for our anniversary every year. And then for the rest of the trip, we had to move over to Dockside to save a little bit of money. Saving money is kind of a stretch because what ended up happening was we paid so much for that one night at the Hard Rock, yeah, and then Dockside was between, I can't remember, is it between two and three hundred dollars a night? We would have been better off just booking every night at the three hundred and fifty dollar rate at the Hard Rock, but instead we stayed at Dockside. Smart. The moral or the point to this story is to just book your hotel room as soon as you have even a rough idea about your dates. Universal has a great refund policy, so if you cancel any time six days or earlier prior to your trip, you get a full refund. Also, another advantage to booking early is that you can just watch the price and if the price ever drops from your original booking price, you can just call Universal and get that new price. It's a great way to save money. We do it with almost every trip because if you lock in a price at a certain point, the only thing that can happen is you save money. You're never going to have to pay more for that room at any point. We hope this video was helpful and we hope that you are enjoying and having fun while planning your trip to HHN this season. We are super excited about the event. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know, like what other questions do you have about the event that we can answer in future videos? If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching.